Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Science Thursday, we're going to talk about oscilloscope. So let's dive right into it. So we already looked into multimeters. So what is this? This is exactly a bigger brother of multimeter because multimeters can show voltage very well. They are quite adept at doing that and they are quite awesome at that. Cheap, best, reliable, safe, all that. But what oscilloscope can do is basically show voltage over time. Now that time part is the interesting part here because you have to understand that almost everything uh, either runs on AC or has some DC signal so to say to it. Uh, to understand those things a simple number will not do. For example let's say a multimeter or even something like you know a low budget multimeter you can buy it will have a frequency system and if you take the probes and plug it into the main it will show 50 hertz or 60 hertz depending on your location so it does work that's an absolute thing however do you know whether it's a square wave do you know it's a you know modified square wave do you know it's a sine wave how would you know to see that you have to use oscilloscope that's the whole point anything that has frequency and not specifically speaking anything that has like you know higher than 10 hertz and all that jazz you have to see it or at least mathematically uh, grasp it somewhere to understand what the hell is going on for this reason, to quote unquote, see the waveform, to see the signal, to see the frequency, you have to use an oscilloscope. It's not an option, it is the only way to see. Now, why there is such a uh, you know strong need for this in electronics community? Well, simple answer is uh, uh, you know evident because even if you think about let's say old technology, let's say CRT TVs, how the heck do you think they worked? They literally had electromagnet and a signaling algorithm that simply said, uh, you know, draw a line then go back draw a line then go back now here's the how does it know when to, when it reaches the end point and all that you do not you have to create a timing signal it's like bro reset now bro reset now or again you could have feedback loops all these things are working on a signal level there is a signal the when you hear about people talking about inset pal and all that those are signal standards there is a code to it so to say how would you see that code you would need oscilloscope now this is a modern digital oscilloscope but you have to understand we, we've been using oscilloscope as early as 1970s because again it was necessary it was not an option we had to have this otherwise we could not see signals and all that so this is the whole reality of it. We have to have it. And when you come to digital world, uh, the whole digital system is reliant on like, you know, waveforms and going up and down, up and down. That's it. Like what, ha what do you think actually happens when you connect your ethernet or even your Wi-Fi? That's what is going on. It's like signal is going up and down. So basically voltage up and down, voltage up and down. Now these things are happening very far quickly. So you cannot just use your multimeter and like see the uh, right down with the paper. It's not a battery discharge curve. It will be much, much quicker for that. So we rely on digital world and on top of that nowadays almost every home appliance have like multiple uh, ic chips drive because there used to be a time you know back in the old days where microwaves were just microwave nowadays even they have controlling chip algorithms and all that jazz refrigerators stabilizers ups everything has something uh, you know similar to this basically like a arduino controller and all that again uh, specifically fine-tuned and all that jazz but microcontrollers are everywhere and they rely on signals to see the signal you need an oscilloscope it's not an option it's a necessity now let's understand the example a bit more better now power wise it is very important to us everyone especially anybody who's running a server or a big computer it's kind of important so how do you know whether your power is clean or not because again you can utilize normal meter it's like plug it and it's like ah, oh, it's 50 hertz because again many time people have fried their equipment even though voltage may be same let's say 240 volt 240 volt uh, if the switch is made for like let's say 60 you feed 50 yeah bad things gonna happen so it has happened so you have to see it uh, so People generally use uh, oscilloscope to double check for that because specifically if you have ups and all that and the ups is square wave uh, your power supply will overheat and sometimes get damaged to see whether it's a square wave or sine wave you have to use an oscilloscope and it's a very critical thing because you may find a very local brand which just have a normal square wave you find apsc which will specify modified sine wave you will find online ups which will say pure sine wave how would you know all these signals because to a multimeter all of them will look just like a signal they will say best case scenario it will say 50 hertz or not or is it drifting or not because uh you know on a cheap equipment it's not very stable so 60 hertz will be like you know 60.1 60, 60 uh, you know 59.9 it, it will fluctuate a little how that a multimeter can show but it cannot show the waveform and if you do not know the waveform you do not have absolute certainty whether this waveform is truly like, because again scammers exist you have to be mindful of that you have to see the waveform 
multimeter is to your rescue then we come to the power industry basically anything that has to deal with high power motors aka every elevator in the planet so most of them nowadays run on three phase uh, what we call variable frequency drive how would you see that oscilloscope now again there are specific tools that are fine tuned uh, made for that that will just give you low level information but if you need to see high level information because you have to understand that because the power consumption of these puppies are so huge they create a very bad power uh, what we call capacitance so, uh, so to say in the system and like they're very brutal on uh, power factor they destroy power factor so to say you'd want clean power factor for your transformer to remain cool and uh, like you know large variable frequency drive they destroy it so what do people do they take three phase a transformer they make it six phase then have 12 diodes and then they get the dc then that dc goes to an inverter then that inverter drives the motor everything is awesome this reduces power factor how would you see it oscilloscope that's the whole point everything comes down to that point like you say it's 50 hertz how would you know you say it's sine wave how would you know you have to check it you have to double uh, you know uh, be absolutely sure and in microcontroller there is a lot of communication in standard for example i recently bought a car so it has a steering wheel steering wheel has buttons now how the heck that buttons are con connect communicating with the uh, basically a car infotainment system in olden days it was quite simple there was actual uh, wire connected to it nowadays there is a communication bus there why because again they can change the infotainment system they have to make sure it's compatible with a lot of things so they have can bus which uh, if i'm not mistaken is i squared c so how would that communication will look like oscilloscope that is the reality like everything in your day-to-day -day life generally relies on one form of the signal or like you know just power raw and all that that's why you have to have oscilloscope now what how does this work inherently it's surprisingly simple it just have a basic multimeter that sends the data which is very refreshing very fast the refresh rate is yolo fast it's like refreshing very quickly then that data that is captured sends through what we call uh, analog to digital converter because the sensor is just detecting a voltage it's like okay uh, 2.56 volt 2.36 volt 2.7 volt it's just detecting a voltage that voltage is converted into a digital signal now that's the money making point if you have a good analog to digital converter even with a less inf uh, you know fancy packaging you have awesome equipment if you have a, a you know amazing packaging with you know hundreds of channel and all that jazz but it has a you know crappy what we call analog to digital converter you stuck so for those sort of reason uh, that is the main point that's how uh, oscilloscope works it just takes the signal and converts it into digital signal and does it very quickly because again it has to do thousands of time per second so because even if you are seeing let's say 60 hertz signal that does not mean you can capture it as 60 hertz to capture it like you know much uh, slower you have to slow it down it's like okay you take a 60 second you slice it in let's say 10,000 pieces yes 10,000 and then you will graph it out because if you don't do that you will just have a uh, low approximator your sine wave will look like sawtooth that does happen so for this reason you have to understand uh, the analog to digital converter is the uh, basically heart of any uh, oscilloscope then we come to how would you buy one like uh, what are the first thing that you will hear first thing you will hear is channels now channel are simply parallel probing basically uh, even if you buy a very cheap uh, you know oscilloscope 20 dollar cheap uh, pocket oscilloscope that you have to assemble yourself will they work absolutely uh, will they have more channels depends most of them don't so you can just have one channel that's it you're stuck with it but let's say you have to understand three phase equipment you have to have three parallel systems if you have to understand let's say serial communication there is a good chance they it might have more uh, data pins for example usb 2.0 have two data pins and you have to compensate for both of them even uh, in other scenarios where you are using uh, some sort of uh, you know compensating equation uh, twisting wires can sometimes have different very uh, you know my negative voltage basically minus five plus five would be sent just to compensate for the noise and all that so to see that you have have to have same equipment doing the probing otherwise you will have like you know two sine waves looking into different places you would not know whether they are sync or not so multi-channel equipments become very important so like four uh, two is the bare minimum that anybody would buy four is at yeah at that point you are like stable and six and seven yeah it's just a lot of money so that's the whole point generally try to avoid if you are spent, spending serious amount of money and you're like dude this is something that i want to keep for a few years generally people will advise you to go with four try avoiding two so that's the channel point then we come to the bandwidth now bandwidth is basically its frame rate so to say how uh, you know quickly it has it basically take one second and stretch it out how much it's stretching it can do and higher the frequency lower the accuracy what does that mean that simply means let's say you buy equipment that says 50 megahertz you're like yay and i'm gonna like you know uh, probe equipment that let's say microcontroller there are many microcontrollers that are not 50 megahertz you're gonna cut in that you're gonna get a very terrible result why 
because if you buy a, a oscilloscope and it's built for let's say 50 megahertz uh, for 70 starting 70 percent awesome everything is sharp every signal is crisp everything is awesome but the moment it starts to go to almost its maxing ability it will start to degrade in terms of signal quality so it will become poop so to make sure that you actually get a clear signal for the microprocessor or microcontroller that you are utilizing you have to be ahead of it by at least uh, you know to some degree like at least 30 degrees uh, 30 degrees i'm saying at least 30 percent or in some scenarios some uh, institutes and labs they will not even talk about like unless you are 2.5 times ahead of it so if you are working on 100 uh, megahertz equipment then like your oscilloscope must be 500 megahertz and that's the reason why you see people uh, you know using big numbers like really really big numbers even for hobbyist oscilloscope why the heck they are using hundreds of megahertz because again yeah uh, Arduino and all that jazz even TNC they are not running on that high frequency so that's the whole reason because as you start to approach the max capacity of the equipment the uh, you know loss of the signal is way too brutal so to say so bandwidth is the critical aspect be mindful of your own use and you're like hey i only gonna deal with means power and all that and those are 60 hertz and want to see uh, you know sinusoidal pulse wave modulation those are let's say uh, 500 megahertz or you know two three kilohertz and it is megahertz enjoy don't even think about it but again if you want to do a microprocessor level be mindful of that then we come to the resolution aspect because again it took the voltage it made uh, you know created a slice in that slice it still has to map the volume like where the heck uh, the voltage lie in this graph so graph uh, is directly proportional in bits again like a digital system now bit generally uh, you will get a, like any quality system will give you at least 8 bit 8 bit is around uh, you know two, uh, 256 uh, steps so to say. it's quite good 10 bit is also there however they are ludicrously expensive and then there is 12 bit which is idiotically expensive so don't look too much into it but be mindful try to uh, don't go below 8 bit try just try to make sure of that aspect then we come to memory depth because you are seeing something that is happening ludicrously fast and because you are seeing not you are not just seeing something like on off on off on off that's how your computer works but the oscilloscope has to see in that on and off it's like okay this is an on off signal was the you know square wave absolutely clear or was there overshoot like you know voltage went two up and then it came down whether it was like curved because of capacitance of the cable and all that these are these are the things that will handle your handshake between equipment let's say when you connect a usb c port to a high power usb c adapter there is a handshake those handshakes relies on the signal integrity if the signal integrity uh, you cannot check because of the equipment is not showing you you will not never figure out like there is many times people complain it's like bro i connected usb-c to a laptop i have a or like a you know branded thing the cable did not work the cable was the reason why you were not charging at full speed you check the cable in continuity everything is working but signal strength was degraded to see that signal strength you have to stretch that on and off and see what was happening for that reason resolution becomes a very critical aspect and to see that to truly really see that you need memory depth because you have to capture it you cannot just like on off on off on off no you need to capture like show me that what exactly happened it's like a high speed camera so for that reason length of time you can capture would be barely in few milliseconds so like one millisecond or two millisecond and uh, the more channels you have the more uh, uh, resolution basically in depth big depth you have the poorer that will become but it's more than good enough for more than enough time that's what it uh, directly represents then we come to trigger now in early days trigger was like you know somebody triggering it as like okay show me the waveform now but now it is because we have so many transient signals and all that jazz and straight capacitance and everything working in micro volts uh, this generally it's the best left to the oscilloscope oscilloscope as long as you set it up it will do the job basically you can even have some people uh, you know configure a voltage probe with uh, current clamps and all that and that way they can figure out what we call inrush current because anything that has induction motor into that sometimes they can have brutal inrush current as in brutal like as in like it will destroy your whole house kind of brutal and you need to see that because it happens in uh, you know hundredth of a second for that reason you need oscilloscope to trigger it because you cannot trigger it so oscilloscope will trigger it so that's why you will see tri trigger with this uh, trigger with serial bus trigger with this trigger with that trigger, like that's why trigger is so important you are not fast enough to trigger it now okay i specified how it's important gave some examples how does it work and all that just like low level at least surface level so what are your options let's say 
if you are very tight on money and you just want to see waveform that's all you like you know want to do like hey let me see a waveform i want to understand how this works then i'll buy something important or not you can start with handheld options some of them like single channel options come at 4000 uh, rupees to 5000 uh, rupees and like you can uh, these are like basically sub 100 dollar equipments uh, they they okay at best case scenario they are okay nobody will take it seriously but it's more than good enough to show you what's going on so and at least for ups uh, testing and all that inverter setups and all that that's priceless that's like because at least this is good enough you will see hey dude this is square wave inverter you are selling me a sine wave and it gives out a square wave that's more than good enough for those kind of situation go with that then we have pc option because again inherently the final uh, operations of a oscilloscope is done digitally a computer is a very powerful digital machine why not send that one so it just has a like a box it uses your mo me uh, computer's memory computer's ram computer's uh, processor computer's display everything is computer is doing is just uh, you know capturing the signal so that's a pc option it comes around you know to less than 200 dollars so to say so that's also an option but people generally don't recommend that because while original branded ones they have actual optical isolations where you cannot mess up no matter what happens on the, your oscilloscope it will not mess up your usb port sometimes it could go wrong now again not in the optical as well that's the whole point of optical isolation is the cheaper chinese one and uh, how would you know whether it's actually a branded one or not then we come to the benchtop one now benchtop ones are serious where you if somebody sees this in your benchtop and is running with some sine wave and all that, people are like, yeah, this guy is serious. This guy is legit, as legit as it gets. So those will start around, uh, you know, $300 to $500. And then there is a professional option which are used in labs like uh, AMD lab, Intel labs and all that. They cost so much that you don't ask about their price. Basically, they are so expensive. Mercedes, Ferrari, these are cheap equipment compared to that. And I'm not joking. I'm literally not joking because think of it this way. You have to be multiple times ahead of the frequency that you are measuring. Imagine what would you need to measure, uh, let's say, AMD CPU that runs at 5 gigahertz. Imagine that. So again, they have uh, multiple clever tricks. But how many clever tricks you need to have, like, you know, where you can actually work on 10 gigahertz or sometimes even faster than that, because again, your optical frequency sometimes nowadays because of the SPF module can go even higher than that. You have to have equipment that goes even more ludicrous than that. So it's ludicrously expensive. Those equipments, either you will find them in a dumpster because again, the company, every few days, the standards keep changing. So they have to introduce a newer equipment. Uh, the EV blog uh, keeps finding them surprisingly. So these sort of things happen so handheld i do not recommend that and pc option up to you if you can be uh, trust the uh, seller and be sure that this is a proper one it will have proper uh, optical isolation you don't have to worry about anything but if it's not uh, you may risk uh, destroying your but again if you have an old laptop that you are not using anything and you know for a fact that it is going to recycling enjoy Benchtop is very serious. You can start with Rigol DS1054 and be mindful these uh, oscilloscopes are kind of like equipment and because of their necessity they do not get refreshed as quickly as you would think like because this model came after four and a half year of previous model and so it might even take four or five years and specifically because of the pandemic I'm pretty sure the next model will not come anytime soon. So don't expect like okay hey this was released in 2010 why the heck i should buy this now you may be surprised that they may have wait for 2022 to release another one it takes time it's not like a mobile phone every six months and all that so it's a bit different world so this was my presentation on oscilloscope just an overview and i have provided healthy dose of videos down below which i have uh, selected uh, for your viewing consumption and enjoy those and if you liked it learn from it in that case please click the like button share it on your friend that will help me a lot if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i'd urge you to press this like press it twice to show me extra disappointment please leave a comment because i try to reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you are free and as always thanks for watching